Cox Bonavillar. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Focusing this hour on Robin Williams. Uh, he kept busy with work, and he also gave his time generously to, to many causes. He traveled to 13 countries with the USO and entertained only 90,000 servicemen and women. And he was also a star of the Comic Relief Benefits. These are fundraisers to help those in need, help the homeless. Uh, here he is with a typically enthusiastic appeal for donations. Take a look. We want you to pick up that phone and call us at the number that's dancing above my waist right now. That's right, 976 pre. No. Oh, it's over. What's happened? Remember that the money you're donating is going directly to homeless people. <laughs> I have that incredible voice. Get that Sunday, voice. Sunday, Sunday, fuel injected vibrator. Sunday. <sighs> Let's bring in a great old friend of Robin Williams. This is uh, Bob Zamuda, comedian friend, uh, founder of Comic Relief. Bob, welcome, and I am so sorry for the loss of your deal, your dear friend. Um, well, you, go ahead, go ahead. You, uh, ju just amazing, you know. You just saw the clip with uh, Whoopi Goldberg and yeah. Billy Crystal. Robin was. Uh, I founded Comic Relief with Robin, Whoopi, and Billy, and we have raised over seventy million dollars. Oh, that's so their, great! Because of because of their efforts. So people know him as a comedian, as a wonderful dramatic actor, but he was also really a real humanitarian and helped uh, a lot of people, which even makes this more shocking. But in a way. Um, I got to tell you, there's a long history of uh, depression with comedians to begin with, and comedians themselves why is that, talk Bob? about this. Well, I'll tell you exactly why. You know, Harold Ramis, who just passed not that recently, uh, a, a little while ago, uh, Harold was one of the original board members of Comic Relief, and Harold would always believe very much that the comedian, when they you trace the stand-up comedian back, at one point he was the class clown. And if you trace the class clown back either further than that, that you will find that there's a history of depression in the family and usually with the mother. Hmm. The mother is usually depressed. I understand this was the case also with Robin. And because the mother's depressed, the young boy tries to cheer mom up, tries hmm. to be a clown. Coping and, mechanism, uh, perhaps, to, to, to life back at home and dealing with family issues, and then, you know, fast yeah. forward to someone like Robin Williams, right? Um, and, and you had said before, and it's hard for us, to, I say us fans, um, but you, you knew the guy, you loved the guy, but, but you were saying earlier on CNN that, you know, if you were in an elevator and it was just the two of you, he wouldn't talk. But the second a second person or a third person came in, boom, it was the audience, and he came alive. He he was a true performer. Robin had no social skills whatsoever. I knew Robin for over 35 years, and yet he could not handle being one-on-one -on -one with a person. Even he would you? freeze it. Oh yeah, even me. Even you would. It's be like being with a total stranger in an elevator. It was so odd. But if another person came in, then all of a sudden you were an audience and Robin could become alive. That's why he was so good at what his psychological imperative in life had to be p to perform. This is why he was so good at it. And you know, it, he was bipolar, and of course when you get in a situation, his highs were highs, and unfortunately his lows were very, very low. So as a dear friend who's known him for 35 plus years, you, Billy, Whoopi, you know, who, whoever else who have known him and loved him and worked with him, do you just know as sort of the Robin Williams inner circle how he is one-on-one -on -one, and you all just sort of deal accordingly? Well, you don't know, you didn't know it was going to lead to this, of course, because Robin, your comedy is the best of height. Your comedy is there to kind of relieve the stress and tension. That's why he's there. We have a, 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 a line in comedy that's saying there are no jokes. You know, and the comedians are very, very serious uh, when they are, many of them, when they are not on stage. You would, you know, very different kind of people. In Robin's case, he was very much that loner until, like I said, until another person came in the room, two people. It had to be at least two people, and then he would start performing and he'd be fine. So I could see why this could happen in the middle of the night, him alone, no audience, and, and just crashing, crashing, and let alone the alcohol problem. And you know, we've heard Robin's been very honest about going into rehab and joking yes. about it and his depression. And I think, in a way, Brooke, this is one of the reasons why we are really shocked about this because 
you, you thought, oh, well, Robin's going through that, but but he's handling it obviously because the way he's talking about. Mm -mm. He was the fact very that he's good. Talking at about it, one up. would think it's fixed, but 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 not. Sadly, no, um, I, no, I, no. Bob Zamuda, can I keep you around? I don't want to let you go. Sure, yeah, time. absolutely, I have, absolutely. I know you have a great story about Robin Williams back to being on stage. We'll share that. Oh, with Andy that. Kaufman, yes, yes, yes. We'll be right back. Hang on to that. Those are the things I miss the most. The little idiosyncrasies that only I knew about. That's what made her my wife. Boy, and she had the goods on me, too. She knew all my little peccadillos. People call these things imperfections. But they're not. Oh, that's the good stuff.